Lee, firstly, how are you? How's that recovery from that surgery? Well, uh, so far so good. Uh, had been a uh, tough four months, but yeah, uh, so happy to be back on field and uh, playing again for my national team. And uh, so, so, so happy to be to be here. So yeah, body is perfect and totally fine. You've been watching the action on, I presume, and, and really happy with the boys winning the ODI series. Yeah, definitely. You know, so, um, after a test match we had, and I think. Uh, the ODI, the way they performed, they step up and then and, and delivered the best. And so that gave us a kind of a good momentum as well as a, bat, as a, a T20 side. And uh, yeah, we will just try our best to, to play the natural game and have the good preparation for the next World Cup. OK, finally, just quickly, you had some potential debutants today. Anyone making their T20i debut? Yeah, we have a couple of debutants. Uh, Nangyal, who played well in the ODIs, he's been uh, playing for, for uh, and uh, Ijaz Ahmad Zai. He's debuting as well, and also Siddiq Atal coming back to the side after a year. So these three uh, new faces will be there. Rashid, best of luck. Thank you so much. Okay, see so if I can find Paul Sterling here in Afghanistan, winning the toss, choosing a bowl first. Paul, happy enough with that? You'll have a bat? Yeah, looking forward to getting out there and getting a hit and getting a score on the board, hopefully. Is this a good change of format for you, with it being now the format that's going to dominate the year? Massive World Cup in June for Ireland. Yeah, it's the start of a really great period coming up. That World Cup's obviously the cherry on top, and we just look forward to starting that process today. Give me any team news, uh, some people who miss out, anyone interesting coming in? Well, it's great to have Josh back. Um, he joins up with us, plays tonight. Uh, George actually hasn't felt the best, so he stayed away from the ground tonight. So uh, Neil Rock comes in for him in the middle order. And I think that's pretty much it. We're going with two spinners. Straight up. Good to see you as always. Cheers. Okay, that's the news from the toss down here. Rashid Khan is back. Afghanistan have won the toss. They're going to bowl first. Oh, did you hear that no, the island team? Was that in, sorry, Niall. Sorry, was that? Hang on a sec. Whoa, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You're in my, in my shot. No, it doesn't matter. I can do without teams. Don't worry. I can do without teams. Team, no, it won't be about teams. I'll, I'll mention key players. Yeah. Watch out. Watch out, guys. Watch out, watch out. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the highlights of this important T20 series. This is the first one, of course, T20 International between Afghanistan and Ireland. And we are going to come... Ah, sorry, 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 sorry. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the highlights. This is the important T20 series. Of course, the build-up to that uh, T20 World Cup is not that far away. Afghanistan versus Ireland. And we are set to go from Sharjah. So this is really important. This one, the first of three. And, of course, the first game is going to be so important. Let's have a look at the, uh, the teams that are involved in this encounter for starters. And if we just have a look at uh, the lineup of uh, Afghanistan for starters, the great news is that the captain, Rashid Khan, is back. So he's going to be an important player. Farooq, of course, is going to be 
also important. Naveen or Huck as well. And Nabi and Amazai are going to be uh, important. And then a couple of openers who are very experienced as well. And for Ireland, well, their lineup is uh, key because uh, Balburnie is there and Sterling. Now, there are a couple of opening batsmen who need to play really well to get a good start. Texter has been in good form. Tucker as well. And uh, Josh Little is in the lineup as well. So that's great news for them. And Afghanistan have won the toss and they have elected to bowl first. Let's join the highlights with our commentators. at his best.
wicket for six. It's been an enthralling contest. Ireland started strongly overcoming Afghanistan to register their first ever test win. Afghanistan came back strongly in the one dayers. Their stars, Raman Gubaz and Hasmat Allah Shahidi and Mohammad Nabi, shone brightly, resulting in a comprehensive 2 0 win. It's now time for the T20 internationals. Their past record favours Afghanistan, and with the hosts finding their touch, Ireland will have to battle hard to win the contest. Yep, we are set to go. Now, this is going to be enthralling, this uh, T20 series. There are three games. This is the first, Afghanistan versus Ireland. These guys have played quite a few games against each other, and we're coming to you live from Sharjah Cricket Stadium. Now, let's just have a little bit of a recap as to uh, what has happened so far on this tour and the only test Ireland won by six wickets that was in Abu Dhabi and we had three one days which uh, the second one unfortunately was abandoned due to uh, unexpected rain it was torrential rain we didn't get a chance to get a ball bowled so that was disappointing for everyone involved the first one day Afghanistan won by 35 and the third they won by plenty to win that series and it's all on the go for the T20 series and we've got the first one coming up and conditions are just ideal for this one. It should be a terrific game. The first, it's always the important game when you've only got three games. And, of course, both these teams are fired up to get going. I've got uh, Fadai alongside me and also Niall. Right up, boys. Let's cut to the chase straight away. Fadai, the record from Afghanistan here in the UAE and at this venue in particular is very impressive. Absolutely. Uh, good evening, uh, Hazy. Good evening, Niall. Uh, particularly for Afghanistan, Rash is coming back and he's got the most wickets in Sharjah, talking about his overall 96 wickets in UAE. So coming back into the side, leading the side, and Afghanistan playing in the conditions that it favours is going to help Afghanistan. And let's look at those numbers. 22 games have been played, which uh, Afghanistan have uh, won 15 and lost only seven. What does that mean to Ireland now? Uh, I think it's going to be a difficult series, truth be told. The, the ODIs didn't quite go so well, you know, after such a great win in, in Abu Dhabi for the Test match. But actually, this surface here in Sharjah generally, is, it's like home from home for Afghanistan. And you can just imagine the Afghanistan spinners licking their lips when they're coming to the ground. For Ireland, they've got to adapt. They've got to adapt quickly. But I think as a batting unit for Ireland, they've got to be brave. They can't leave anything at the park. They've got to try and take the Afghan spinners on because if you sit tight against the quality that Afghanistan will bring, you're a sitting duck like we saw in the uh, third LDI. So for Ireland, it's a chance to build towards a World Cup. You've got to be brave and go out there and give it a good crack. Yeah, they're going to have an eye on the World Cup, of course. And uh, with Rashid Khan back, it is going to be uh, a difficult one for Ireland. He's a class act, that's for sure. We've got a preview for you. Let's have a look. For every team, momentum is very important to carry on uh, in white wall cricket or it's uh, red wall cricket. As we are uh, coming off a good uh, ODI series, it's going to be important for our team uh, uh, in the upcoming T20I series also. It's going to be a crucial uh, last T20I series for us as a team before uh, we play the World Cup. So this is going to be important for our preparation in the upcoming T20 World Cup. It's always fun to join back your teammates and uh, so hopefully we can win this series and do perform to my abilities and be, be, be a part of a team that uh, does well in the T20 as also similar to the ODI we had. In both series we've seen that they've been evenly contested. I think obviously the last game we didn't show the best of the bat there, but I think nice to get a few fresh faces into, into the squad and into the team and I hope they can bring in and show their skills. The big thing for us is that we're a, we're a real tight-knit community. You know, the, as a team, we're real tight. We have a great bond, um, the, the bond we have and the friendships we have. Um, so that kind of be one of our main strengths. Another thing is, you know, if you guys can, can put their hands up and, and show again, that's going to be a big thing for us coming up now is starting our new cycle for the World Cup to kind of uh, nail down the team and, and kind of get a, a good run of, of games together. 
play for your country, I think that's a big thing for us. You know, to play T20s for, for Ireland is a, is a massive privilege and honour. I think the guys are ready to go uh, to, to right the wrongs of the ODI setup. Um, you know, and hopefully we can get out there and show them medal. OK, so both the teams are uh, getting ready for this one for tonight. Let's just talk about Afghanistan a bit more. It's not just about Rashid Khan, of course. They've got some very handy players up and down that batting order as well. Well, absolutely. Uh, a good thing Afghanistan has done in this particular T20 series is Afghanistan is playing young talent. The average overall team age is under 24. And then we just saw Nangyalai Harote, I mean, the other day. Yep. So bringing in new, new players. Uh, and and uh, Mohammad Nabi should be playing. Uh, interesting thing is Mohammad Nabi's best batting figure is 89 not out is against Ireland. And best bowling figures, 4 for 10, is against Ireland. <laughs> and same time, Rashid Khan is back. He's got two fifers against Ireland. He's got two four first so absolutely quite a decent looking side to me as far as Afghanistan is concerned and as we heard also there from Naveen Haku, I'm sure he's going to be uh, utilizing uh, conditions with the new ball we need to find out more about that pitch with Tino 8 p.m. start, and what does that mean for the T20s? It means that the sun's gone down, the temperatures are cooler, and it's uh, nice and uh, comfortable for the players all the way through this game this evening. The pitch is the same one that has been used in the last uh, couple of ODIs here as well. 185 overs have gone into it. What does that mean? It means that the surface is a little bit tired and it needs some rejuvenation. That rejuvenation came this morning in the form of a firm sprinkle and uh, a nice rolling from the groundsman. That's why it's looking like it's holding together a little bit better than we saw in that last one-day international. Still not a blade of grass. When you look at it, you would probably think that this is a surface that you want to bat first on. 215 is the highest first-inning score that's been scored here at Sharjah and T20 internationals, but only two totals of above 145 have been chased. So in general, it's a low-scoring pitch. And when you look at the tiredness in the surface, when you can see that it's been used a lot over the last week or so, the decision, if it was up to me, I would make sure I bat first, put some runs on the board, and look to put pressure on the team batting second. Tino, thanks very much. Niall, uh, that track, you had a good look at it as well. You agree with Tino? Well, in Sharjah Hazy, it, you've got to play down the ground. Hit down the ground. It's not going to bounce much. It will turn a bit. Uncomplicated batting. Powerful uh, strikers here at Sharjah Prosper. Don't look too square and don't get inventive. Bang the ball back over the bowler's head. Attack the side screen. OK, well, Tino gave his views about what he thinks should happen at the toss. Let's find out uh, what did happen with Andrew Leonard. Time for the toss now and a move over to the shortest format, the most exciting and exhilarating one. It's time for three T20Is here under the floodlights in Sharjah. And we've got Afghanistan's captain joined by Ireland's Rashid Khan. Great to have you back in action alongside Paul Sterling and the ICC match referee, Mr David Boone. Rashid, you've got the coin. Tails. Tails is called. And it is a head. <laughs> Rashid, you won the toss. What are you going to do and why, please? Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh... You would like to bowl first, and uh, uh, well, there is no specific reason behind that, but we can expect some more due it later. And, and uh, as you know, we have most of the spinners in the team, and I think that's going to be a little bit a crucial part. And uh, yeah, we have decided to bowl first. It's been a journey for you personally. Firstly, how are you? How's that recovery from that surgery? Well, uh, so far so good. Uh, had been uh, tough four months, but yeah, uh, so happy to be back on field and uh, playing again for my national team, and uh, so 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 happy to be to be here. So yeah, body is perfect and totally fine. You've been watching the action on, I presume, and, and really happy with the boys winning the ODI series. Yeah, definitely. You know, so, um, after a test match we had, and I think uh, the ODI, the way they performed, they step up and and, and, and delivered the best, and so that gave us a kind of a good momentum as well as a. But as a uh, T20 side and uh, yeah, we will just try our best to, to play the natural game and have the good preparation for the next World Cup. Okay, finally, just quickly, you had some potential debutants today. Anyone making their T20i debut? Yeah, we have a couple of debutants. Uh, Nangyal, who played well in the ODIs, he's been uh, playing for, for uh, and uh, Ijaz Ahmad Zai, he's debuting as well. And also Siddiq Atal coming back to the side after a year. So these three uh, new faces will be there. Rashid, best of luck. Thank you so much. OK, see if I can find Paul Sterling here in Afghanistan, winning the toss, choosing a bowl first. Paul, happy enough with that? You'll have a bat? Yeah, looking forward to getting out there and getting a hit and getting a score on the board, hopefully. Is this a good change of format for you, with it being now the format that's going to dominate the year? Massive World Cup in June for Ireland. Yeah, it's the start of a really great period coming up. That World Cup's obviously the cherry on top, and we just look forward to starting that process today. 
give me any team news, uh, some people who miss out, anyone interesting coming in? Well, it's good to have Josh back. Um, he joins up with us, plays tonight. Uh, George actually hasn't felt the best, so he stayed away from the ground tonight. So uh, Neil Rock comes in for him in the middle order. And I think that's pretty much it. We're going with two spinners. Straight up. Good to see you as always. Cheers. OK, that's the news from the toss down here. Rashid Khan is back. Afghanistan have won the toss. They're going to bowl first. Andrew, thanks very much. Right, let's go through those teams. Niall, Ireland. Yeah, well, Paul Sterling and Andrew Balberni, there's a lot of focus at top five of the last six opening stands have been relative failures, less than 20. Tector's in good form, Lorca Tucker's playing well. The big inclusion, Neil Rock, wicket keeper batter. He won't keep wicket, I don't think. He's going to add a bit of impetus at the back end. And then you've got two leg spinners in Gareth Delaney and Ben White. So, and Josh Little, the Gujarat Titans fast bowlers, back in the 11. OK, right, let's uh, have a look at Afghanistan as well. Away we go for that. Yeah, it's looking a good side. Rahmanullah Gurbaz, Ibrahim Zadran, the duo is a recognized face now, put together a great partnership. Asmatullah Omar, he adds a lot in the middle order. I like Ishaq Rahimi, he's been given his second game. Sadiq Atal is good to play, he's a left-handed batsman. He can smash the ball, he can open the batting. And Rashid Khan, he's back, he enjoys bowling here and leading the side. It'll be great fun to see. But uh, Naveen Ulhaq and Harotai uh, and Ahmad Zai, I mean Harotai and Ahmad Zai, they'll be fantastic to see. As for the debut for these two is concerned, they really look to be promising talent. We did see Nangyale Harota in the one day. Getting his debut is nice to see. The game is better off when Rashid Khan is playing, that's for sure. So it's just great to see him nice and fit. Now, what about the decision about uh, bowling first? He mentioned, Rashid, about the Jew factor, yeah. how that's going to influence things later. Yeah, I think it's a good decision by Rashid Khan. And there's already a bit of Jew on the outfield. Even now, just right here, there's a bit of Jew. But I'll tell you what, Hazy, there's a bit of Jew. There's a bit of atmosphere. <laughs> there is indeed. Uh, now, what are you expecting from Af Afghanistan first up? What's their key situation with the start of this game? We heard Niall mention about the opening stand and how that's going to be key for Ireland. Well, I think it's a good decision. There's a lot of Jew, a lot of atmosphere. I'll take the cue from Nile, but I think it's good to put uh, Ireland bat first, restrict them, and then chase down the total. That's what probably would be the ploy. And the focus on the T20 World Cup, there's plenty of uh, build-up time. Yeah, I think it's it's two sides, Hayes, that are totally polar opposites, really. Afghanistan have the luxury to bring players and have a look. Ireland, they're still searching for the best 11. Okay. Well, Afghanistan, if you look at the last 100 matches, is second. I mean, with the win percentage above 60% after India, they're looking good and they'll just, just need to build up on that. As you said, World Cup is coming. It's a mega event. This might just be the last series before it. So it's good that Afghanistan is just testing the skills of the young talent and see what they bring about. Right, boys. Thanks so much for your views. Of course, we have uh, three T20 internationals. But before we get underway, we have the national anthems.
this evening for this first of three 2020 internationals of course we're in the holy month of Ramadan this is the Afghanistan team breaking their fast a little earlier this evening there's not uh, eating during the hours of daylight so it's a test for them what a beautiful venue this is in Afghanistan. It's in Misianak, in Khost province. A province which uh, has produced many fantastic players. And then the view of uh, a mosque in Gardiz, the main city of Paktia province. Rashid Khan back amongst it. First time in Afghanistan colours since a match against South Africa in Ahmedabad in the World Cup. Back surgery, and now he's back. Afghanistan winning the toss and deciding to bowl first. Due, obviously, a factor there in that decision. Paul Sterling has got a pretty good record against Afghanistan. Captain of the white ball format. And he's joined by Andrew Balburny, another man who in the past has done good things against Afghanistan. Vastly experienced, and you can see he'll be making his 100th appearance in this format in the second match coming up tomorrow. Mohamed Nabi, goodness me, five for 17 he took in that uh, most recent One Day International. Hugely experienced, has played virtually every 2020 international that Afghanistan have. But he's not going to open the bowling this evening. It's going to be Faisal Haq Faruqi, who was so impressive in that one day international series. And he's chock full of confidence in these conditions as well off the back of an outstanding ILT 20 for MI Emirates, the winning side in that UAE T20 franchise tournament. Let's play. A little bit of swing into the right-handed Balburnie, and Ireland off the mark straight away. Got Andrew Leonard alongside me. Good evening to you, Andrew. And it's an important series for both these sides. Of course, uh, it's a World Cup year. Yeah, very good evening, Brian. Great to be with you and, and great to have that shift of format over to, as you heard me say at the toss, 
Probably the, the most important format for the year, isn't it? With, I can't think of a T20 World Cup that has been more eagerly anticipated than this year's one with the unique nature of it being co-hosted over in the United States. The big dance goes to the big time, really, doesn't it? And these are two sides that will have real hopes of advancing through to the Super 8 in June. This series, crucial preparation. What a ball that is from Faisal Akfaruki. It started to swing in, hit the seam and went away. Paul Sterling didn't get a touch. He would have to have been uh, Don Bradman to do so, I rather fancy. The first ball to Balberni, it swung in sharply to the right-hander. This time it goes away. Look at this Afghan bowling lineup. And you just think truly world-class skills. Ireland will have it all to do to get a defendable total on the board. Faruqi on fire. Again, that swing into the right-hander. Inside edge, saves Sterling. Goodness me, this is an impressive beginning from Faisal Hak Faruqi. The outstanding previous delivery, remember, beat the outside edge. This so nearly beats the inside, the off. In fact, the middle stump could have gone for a walk there, couldn't it? Sterling just gets the bat down in time, and gets an inside edge. But pressure immediately on Ireland. 2-0 losers in the ODI series under the pump after just three balls in the T20s. Again, big swing. Sterling wants the single. Took a little bit of time to get going there, Paul Sterling, but he made it in the end. Best place to be against bowling like this is at the non-striker's end. Again, movement. Perfect line and length would have hit the top of off. Sterling gets it far enough to the right of the mid onfield and Avin Al Haq, who we're so looking forward to seeing. May well take the new ball, you would suspect, given there is no Mujiba Rahman in the Afghanistan starting 11. Not deemed to be worth of a place just yet. Again, big swing into Balburni this time. Rashid Khan, touch for him at mid-off. Look at, look at the reaction of the crowd. Well, I chatted to quite a few of the Afghan fans that were thronging in here to this historic venue. And every single one of them had just one name on their lips. The return of this man, Rashid Khan. He's not just good for Afghan cricket, he's great for the world game. One of the, the real superstars, the, the royalty of the modern game. You can't think of many better in this format. So looking forward to seeing him bowl tonight. What a tremendous in-swinging Yorker. What an over that is from Faisal Haq Faruqi. Ireland put into bat, three without loss. Here are the two teams for this evening's encounter. A couple of debuts for Afghanistan. Ijaz Ahmed Ahmed Zai and Nangiala Karote. Karote we saw, of course, in the uh, one-day internationals, made his debut there and picked up uh, four for 30. So it's going to be Asmatullah Omazai from the Sharjah club end. So it's going to be seam and swing to start with for Afghanistan from both ends of the ground. Good shot from Balburni, piercing the gap on the offside. Not necessarily the best running there, they just picked up two. Well, trademark Andrew Balburni through the covers. Not a huge amount of foot movement. And definitely some movement for 
as Matula Armitsai. Great to see the fans come in now and that will fill up throughout the evening, you'd suspect. Iftar has been broken and this historic venue, I'm sure the Afghan fans will start to come in and support their heroes. Finding the gap again, Balburni. This was nearer the middle, and it's also now gone to the boundary for four. Ireland's first boundary of this series. Yeah, the timing here was, was significantly better from Balburni. Again, just a, a sort of half forward press, but it was almost just floated there, wasn't it, from Ormertzai, and right out of the middle of the bat. Loves it through the covers. Yeah, getting his weight into the shot there. Didn't quite manage to get his weight into uh, the shot earlier in the over. And that'll be four more. Bad ball from Omar Zai. With fine leg up in the circle, that was an absolute gimme. Maybe Ireland have their window here against what could be seen as the weak link in the attack. So that career economy rate for Omer Tsai, well over eight runs per over. Already gone for ten from just three legal deliveries. Trying to drag the length back, but Balberni deals with it nicely. And the man who was out on the leg side has had to come much finer now. He's behind square. Nice little flourish from Balberni to settle Ireland's nerves. Yeah, one big piece of team news for Ireland, no George Dockrell, he's not actually even at the venue, hasn't travelled from the hotel, there's been well, just a bit of illness going around both camps, not just Ireland but Afghanistan too and wish George Dockrell well on his recovery, hopefully he'll be back for the second and third T20Is that will round out the tour on Sunday and Monday, so it means Neil Rock gets a chance. Didn't get to play at all down in Zimbabwe, who was just stuck carrying the drinks. But this is what they're playing for Ireland. Safely have the Test Match Trophy back home in Dublin. I've seen photos of it at Cricket Ireland HQ. Afghanistan win the ODI series. And this is what Rashid Khan and Paul Sterling will both want their hands on at the end of the tour. Those two, they've played an awful lot against each other over the years. Great respect between them. A little bit agricultural there from Balburni. But he'll pick up a couple, and that's a really good over from Ireland's perspective. 12 runs from it, they're 15 without loss. Ireland really struggling in the first over and then uh, having an absolute flyer in the second. Put into bat, remember. Barely any breeze out there at all. And I was just wondering, Omar's eye opening the bowling from the Sharjah club end, as to whether they might have gone with spin Afghanistan. There's been a lot of talk about dew this evening. Swing and a miss. Oh, and it's gone right through the keeper for four byes. That's sloppy. Well, I think if Paul Sterling had connected with this, it would have gone all the way to Dubai. Well, I think we might have been in trouble up here. This is where he was aiming. Up over long on. Maybe the keeper just put off by that bat speed of touch. Look at this. Well, he has thrown the kitchen sink at that, hasn't he? Maybe a slight change of pace, wasn't there, from... Fazal Haq Faruqi, not the greatest piece of glove work from... Remember, one of the two keeping options in the team, Mohamed Ishak, has the gloves ahead of Gerbaz. That's what Sterling does so well. Clears that front leg and goes over the offside. It's a favourite area of his. And that's the 400th boundary four for Paul Sterling. He's actually the first player to achieve that feat from any country 
in 2020 internationals. And that's the pedigree of Paul Sterling. That may surprise some of you at home, but he is as good as Ireland have ever produced in this format, possibly across all three formats. Many will argue, although Ed Joyce will have a, a say across the ODI and the, the Red Bull format. He's the fifth highest run scorer of all time in this format. Coley's at the top of the tree, Roa Charmer, Babar Azam, Martin Guptal, and then it's Ireland's Paul Sterling. It's much vaunted company, yes, but when you look at his career numbers and how they stack up, they're right up there with some of the best in the world. And he's uh, a member of a very select club of players who scored hundreds in all three formats. What a first over this was, though, from Faisal Hak Faruqi. Yeah, talk about the skills needed to bowl with the new ball in the modern T20 game. The ability to swing it both ways. The left arm over the wicket angle. To the two right-handers. I don't know how Paul Sterling's kept that final delivery out. An absolute perler of a Yorker. And now Faruqi says he thinks the swing is gone. He's going to come around the wicket. The angle, it's caused all sorts of problems for Ireland in white ball action against Faisal Haq Faruqi and very nearly seeing off uh, Paul Sterling there. You know, we're on the same pitch that both One Day Internationals were played on. We've managed to uh, bring it back over the course of the last uh, three days. A little sprinkle of water and some serious rolling there from Mohamed Jamal, the curator. Just feels there, there might be a fraction more pace in it as well. Obviously, the floodlights in effect. Throughout this entire contest, as opposed to the day-night aspect of the ODIs. Well, they're slightly agricultural one from Sterling. Maybe disappointed with his dot count already, even though it's just the third over. Yeah, watch the bottom hand coming in here hacking across the line and immediately the bottom hand comes off the bat kept a little bit low as well but afterwards you could see Paul Sterling rehearsing he's trying to use that top hand a little bit more the difficulty though is the angle so hard to play through extra cover and and cover point when the left arm round the wicket bowler is angling every aspect of it into you Sterling is exceptional through the offside always has been there is now a change in the field. The cover sweeper comes in, and deep mid wicket, almost a cow corner, goes out. It's a bad ball that from Faisal Hak Faruqi, and he knows it. A drag down, and with fine leg up in the circle, Sterling happy to put it away for four. The end of the over, and Ireland now are ticking, 27 without loss. Yeah, I think for me. Brian, something Ireland have done really well really since what was a bit of a disastrous campaign here three years ago that ended at this ground against Namibia with a defeat that Cricket Ireland deemed to be that bad that they launched a, a full investigation into it. There was a report published after that. I think Ireland have done so well in T20 cricket since then. They've had a very settled side in this format over the course of the last 18 to 24 months. They really know their game plans in this format, arguably better than any other format. And I just think they'll be quietly confident going into that T20 World Cup come June. It will be now Naveen al to replace Mohamed Sai from the far end. Knows this ground very well. Naveen ul -Haq played here for the Sharjah Warriors in the inaugural season of the ILT20. Controversially didn't play in the second edition after falling out with the franchise. Bad ball that, last ball of the previous over. Halfway down and with fine leg up in the circle. That really was a free hit, really, for Paul Sterling. It's 
So just seam and swing from Afghanistan so far. Does that surprise you, Andrew? As I mentioned earlier, there's been a little bit of talk about Dew. Rashid even mentioned it at the toss when you spoke with him. It really does, and particularly when you look at their, their spin bowling options. Okay, one of them is a debutante in terms of Karote. But Rashid Khan himself, Mohamed Nabi. The two finger spinners at the absolute wood over Ireland a few days ago. They'll have been having nightmares about coming back to face them, even though it's a different format. But instead, for now, Afghanistan have served up seam, albeit some high quality stuff from Faruqi in particular. Yes, Nabi's no stranger to opening the bowling. He's done it on uh, many occasions in the past. Rather than just bowling his orth orthodox off spin, he'll bowl these little swingers. But Rashid, for the time being anyway, deciding that swing and seam is the way to go. Rashid doesn't tend to bowl in the power play himself as a rule of thumb it's good work that's Karote down there at third man goodness me he was like a gazelle to that moving to his left it's almost the exact same part of the ground that he took that spectacular catch at albeit from the other end out at sort of a deep mid wicket sprinting in to take it inches off the turf on as a subfielder before he'd even made his international debut very good young athlete isn't he four for 30 in that odi no doubt we'll see him with the ball shortly ireland will be pleased with this start though This is this big dance that I was talking about. So exciting, Brian, isn't it? That it's coming to the Caribbean and USA from the 1st of June to the 29th of June. 55 matches, more teams than any World Cup of any kind at any format in the shape of 20. It'll be a record nine associates, but for Ireland, they'll have to get past India and Pakistan. That'll be played mainly in the United States. In fact, entirely in the United States. And then for Afghanistan, they'll have to get past both New Zealand and the West Indies. That group will be entirely in the Caribbean. Yes, Ireland in New York and Florida. Afghanistan are in uh, Trinidad, St. Lucia and Guyana. Oh, that's a fantastic pickup. Has he got enough on it? Yes, he has. Lovely shot from Andrew Balburney. Helping that one on its way, it was swinging into the right-hander. And Ireland very much in the swing of things. 37 without loss, four overs gone. just joining us Afghanistan winning the toss electing to bowl first Afghanistan enjoying batting at this stage they're going at 9.25 at the moment Naveen Hux first over has gone for 10 Amazai's first over has gone for 12 Faruqi certainly swung it around and uh, Paul Sterling was pretty intent on uh, getting as much from him as he could this is uh, Amazai now so they've had their problems opening these two over the last uh, five or six performances but uh, so far they're doing a fine job picked up beautifully that uh, last ball from Balburni flipped it away on the leg side for six Dev good evening good evening Mike good evening to everyone listening to this broadcast good intent from the batsmen different format different demands and uh, they've been playing attacking brand of cricket and hence they've been rewarded as well Power play, of course, only two players allowed outside the circle in the first six overs. They're taking advantage of that. Driving on the up straight of the fielder. What a nice little buzz, though, in the field for Afghanistan. They've got really good support in the crowd, too, which is great to see. 
And just wonderful to see Rashid Khan back. The game is better when he's playing, there's no doubt about that. The Keen, there he is, is back. He brings leadership, he brings energy, he brings that extra charisma to the game. Devendu brings us extraordinary talent as well. I wonder what uh, Ireland are thinking about him when he bowls. It'll be a test for his uh, back, of course. Oh, it's a good catch. That's a wonderful catch. Very fine work on the covers. They've broken this opening stand, had to die full length. Now Bernie's the man that's on his way. Celebrations begin. Amazai is going to think this game's a bit better now. Fine grab from Gabaz. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. They were going along nicely. And trying to give a bit of room to himself to hammer it through the offside. Excellent catch taken. Inches above the ground. We're talking about energy that will transform the way they will think from ahead, ahead from here on. Just not in control of the stroke. That was a sensational catch. Balbani goes for 22. Gurbaz making the mark with the catch. 38 for one. Afghanistan will be uh, breathing a little bit easier now. It was a quick fire, 22 from Valverde, 14 balls only. Lorcan Tucker now in at number three. Afghanistan will be happy that opening stand has been broken. Call from Paul Sterling. Leg by for starters. Look at uh, Tucker's T20 international career, 27 years of age, over 1,000 runs, strike rate 122. Average just over the 20 mark with the best of 94 not out. He'll have a job to do, and that's to make sure that this run rate is maintained. He's just trying to give room to himself. Fantastic catch, diving forward from Gurbaz. And Umar Jai, delighted man on the park. Afghanistan are there celebrating the moment. Will Sterling change any? I don't think so. He only knows one way, really, Paul Sterling. He's a wonderful cricketer in white ball cricket in particular. Seen him score some terrific knocks, particularly in this format, actually. He's only got a dozen, he's missed hit a few. Not feeling his fluent best, I'm sure. But he is such a key player now for Ireland, while Bernie gone. Also given the fact that he plays the spin really well. So they will be keeping in mind with Rashid Khan to come into operation. Yeah, good point, Dev. Last ball. Slaps that one away. Straight to Gabaz. No run. What a shot for nothing. 39 for one. tidy over that last one it's brought that run rate down a little bit actually going at 7.8 at the moment it was 9.25 not so long ago that's what a wicket does heading just outside his crease we won't be swinging uh, anymore I wouldn't imagine he'll angle it in Naveen Huck looking for a bit of in-swing if it's there perhaps a fraction still but the ball will be staying dry at this stage there's no doubt later it's going to be on the damp side which is going to hinder the spinners I'm sure for Ireland in particular and that's the thought behind winning the toss and deciding to bowl first to give opportunity to the spinners to make anything that is available on the surface to count and also when it's a bit uh, damp the ball it slides onto the bat 
skids off the pitch, doesn't grip like uh, Rashid Khan will do when he does uh, introduce himself. Quick single, good running, gets Sterling on strike. That's what he needs to do as soon as arriving uh, Tucker. He's trying to give it a room to himself there, Balberni. Great catch taken, diving forward, Gurbaz. It was needed because partnership was developing. And that was hit beautifully by Balberni. Sharp, sharp catch. All it needs is just a, a couple of tight overs just to get things back on track for Afghanistan. He got a little bit of plast on uh, his fingers. You know, he's got a little bit of extra on the hand by the looks of things. He's a tough nut, though, Gabaz. I won't worry him too much. Four balls left before the power play is done. Oh, that's hit beautifully. That is right out of the screws, and that has gone for six. That is a big hit. Just getting into position early. Was waiting for that kind of delivery. Just dropping it short in position to belt it over the boundary for six. A humongous six from Sterling. Short. And he had bludgeoned that one away. Tremendous connection on the roofs for a six. A couple of very good deliveries first up. Gets Sterling on strike and he hits the very next ball for six. Now seven off halfway through this last over of the power play. They've got to go airborne in the power play with only two men out. That's a bit of a rarity, a quick single from Paul Sterling. I was saying before, I wonder how they're going to play uh, Rashid Khan. Some teams just look to work him around a little bit for his four overs. He'll probably bowl two initially and then two a little bit later. Given the fact that Sterling has a lot of experience of playing him, he plays him aggressively. So will it alter, because they lost the wicket to Bulburn early, will it alter the course also? He's coming back after the hiatus of four months. Yeah, that's the thing. You'll be rusty. Watching to see how much torque he has in his back, how much twist he has in his back when he's bowling. Two balls left in this over, and the power play. It's beautifully bowled by Naveen Haq. Also, that psychological aspect when you come back from the injury in a competitive environment. You want to compete, but you have to think about various aspects about whether he's feeling 100% there. Sometimes you push too much too early. Teams like to be around about 50, just over 50, perhaps even 55-ish for one at around about the power play. Ideally, they like to be 60 for none. But if they're around about 55 for one in a power play, that's OK. It's a reasonable scenario, provided they've got uh, batting to come, which Ireland have. Quick single again. So it's good stuff from Naveen Huck. Nine off that over. 48 for one, six gone. Just a quick look at the most successful teams in T20 internationals. The minimum of 100 matches played. Afghanistan at number two there. That's quite interesting. Their win percentage at just over 60%, which is quite extraordinary, considering the other teams that uh, were underneath them as well. Here we go. Power play is done. That means spin can be introduced. And who better than this guy? Great contribution over the years and was important character in putting Afghanistan in number two position when it comes to winning percentage in T20 version of the game. He's been taking wickets, he's been scoring runs, and he's been making difference with his captaincy as well. Goes at six runs and over in games here in the UAE. He's got 96 wickets at 16 apiece at this uh, region. Here we go, Rashid Khan. On target straight away. He's a magician, he's a machine. Great consistency over the years. Afghanistan placed at number two. 
77 win out of 127. Yeah, the thing is to look at the win percentage all the way down. India at 65.75%, Afghanistan at 60, then Pakistan, South Africa, Australia. And go all the way down through to the West Indies at 42. New Zealand 51 is quite low. Number two for Afghanistan. Got a little bit of extra flight. So there's an indication of how he's going to bowl to Paul Sterling. Not scared to give the ball a bit of air. He'll bowl a good percentage of wrong ones as well. 50 up for Ireland, 50 for one into the seventh over. That's the change. He's tossing the ball up, trying to bowl more legs from his off late. Earlier, he used to focus on bowling four deliveries in an over. Googlies. There's a wrong one. Such a quick arm action and also a quick wrist and release means he's difficult to pick. If you haven't seen him before, which Tucker wouldn't have seen much of him, he will be difficult to pick for Tucker. Sterling's seen plenty of him. But he'll generally bowl two, maybe even three wrong ones and over. It's worked away. Nicely done by Tucker to get Sterling back. Tied over so far. And good that he's feeding a strike to Sterling, who has the experience of playing against him, playing attacking shots as well. Now the towel has come out. Yeah, he's got the cloth out. That means the ball's a little bit damp. Brilliant work. Just three runs off four balls so far. That's a wrong one. Sliding down that leg side. Being caught a wide correctly. Into his first over, Rashid Khan trying to make a difference with ball in hand the slipping down the leg side has that got anything to do with the wetness of the ball i think also it's a, just a, a shot you've got a, or a ball you've just got to score runs off you can't afford to miss that sterling will know it pick that one that will turn the googly from Rashid Khan is uh, working through the onside for a, for a single this has been good start just five runs so far from the first five deliveries. He got slip in position as well. All right, so let's see if uh, this is going to be a wrong and see if Tucker happens to pick it. He might just bowl the normal leg spinner. They drive the seam. The seam is so important for Rashid Khan. He's got various angles of that seam that he bowls with to try and uh, outfox the batsman. Was the wrong one. He didn't pick it. And it's gone through the keeper for one. Beautifully bowled by Rashid Khan. Welcome back. He is so exciting. 54 for one. Seeing Tekta, seeing his name looming large there. He's a fine player, Tekta. I wouldn't be surprised if he comes up this order. Seven overs gone. Karote, 19 years of age, and a fine job. Karote in the one days. He debuted in the one days. Now he's getting a run today. Aggressive character. Let's look at uh, all the work done in the power play. 48 runs scored, Sterling hit that one out of the screws. It was a beautiful shot. Picked up superbly from Balberni, that went for six. Great catch by Gabaz. That's pretty quick. Flat and quick on his debut. Karate was very impressive on his one-day debut, making impression with taking wickets at the crucial juncture in the game in combination with Nabi as well. Still a big turner of the ball. And he won't be used to necessarily the ball getting a little bit wet. That's going to be a challenge for some of the younger spinners, some of the less experienced spinners. He's got uh, just jammed up and rattling around. Just watch the way that uh, Rashid Khan gets the ball also. He'll bowl another over for sure. Watch the way that he manages the ball. That's so important. And that's what all the spin bowlers have got to do. He gets it as soon as he possibly can. He works on that seam to keep it as dry as he can. Nicely ball by Karote. 
flat and quick into the pitch. Presentation uh, getting from uh, Rashid Khan, the king himself, Karoche, on his debut. He's uh, had a couple of big days, both in white ball cricket. Good luck to him. That's a fine start to this over. Three dot balls to Tucker, who might be out. He is out. Karate has picked up his first wicket. Well done, sir. Brilliant stuff. Debut. Three tight balls, fourth ball, it picks up an easy wicket. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. The crowd is delirious. He's a favourite cricketer, a popular cricketer in domestic cricket, making impressions straight away. And Afghanistan finding the breakthrough again through a spinner. He's sensing that there will be a lot of dew. Introducing the spinners early, Rashid Khan and now Karote. And Karote taking the wicket straight away in his first over. Short just trying to help it on its way, wanted to play it fine, getting the leading edge and simple catch for Mohamed Nabi. A jubilation for captain and the bowler on his debut, Karote. Great energy from Afghanistan. Frustration for the batsman. Tucker goes for four, 54 for two. Harry Tector now, in at number four. Flat again from Kurote. Tector's off the mark. Now again, rebuilding phase for the, for the Irish side, getting up to a wonderful start with bat in hand. Two wickets in quick succession now. Tector, who has been enjoying great form in white ball cricket as well. Fine player. Over 1,100 runs, average of 23, strike rate 120. He's 24 years of age as well, fine cricketer, Harry Tector. Last ball, what a top over this has been. Lofts that one, cries of catch it. Going to come back for the second, but that is an outstanding over. Just goes for three, picks up a wicket as well on his first outing. Brilliant, eight overs gone, 57 for two. It's been a good comeback uh, by Afghanistan. Ningyal Harote getting the wicket on his debut. Mohammad Nabi has been handed the ball. Mohammad Nabi, what an outing he had in the One Day International. He's got his best figures against Ireland, four for ten. Oh, that's that's a good shot for a second. You would think that the fielder might just be there. Doesn't make it. Tector into his work early here. Ireland's premier bat, lovely footwork, using the depth of the crease and most importantly, the placement. Good, powerful, strong cricket shots from Tector. That's what you need in Sharjah. Keep an eye how Tector goes about his business here tonight. He's going to attack spin down the ground. Nabi just altering the field slightly. Deep mid-wicket, fairly straight, and a deep backward square leg. Good from Tector, even better from Sterling, just protecting that ball. This is the end of Lorca Tucker. It's very soft. It's the only way I'm going to describe it. Great moment 
for the debutante is life is good when you're a young left arm finger spinner. Well, it's been quite interesting with him. He got the wicket in his first over off the fourth ball in T20. He got the wicket of his first ball in first class. And he got a wicket of his fifth ball in the list A and of seventh ball in the T20. So what a T20i debut he's got, Nangyalai Harote. Muhammad Nabi, he had a wonderful outing in the one day. Five for 17, his best first time Pfeiffer in the international circuits for him. Yeah, I'm just looking at Greater Norda, that second one there. Four for 30, oh, I think I might have been in there. I think I might have been one of those victims, I reckon. Greater Noida. Great to have Rash back. A real buzz around the ground when he gets on the screen and gets ball in hand. The drifter. That's where Nabi has become so good. The last two or three years, he's invented this little drifter away from the right-hander. Yeah, absolutely. And how often has he got left-handers out to that ball? Ishaq Rahimi is playing his second game. He's been a little bit fumbling behind the wickets. Well, it's not the best over Muhammad Nabi is ever going to bowl in his life, but it's only gone for seven. Ireland, 64 for two. First T20i, and this is a the stop clock. ICC made an announcement today. It's compulsory now. In all white ball cricket, it's been deemed such a good success. So you have to be ready to start your next over within 60 seconds of the previous over finish. Here we go. So ICC full member, ODI and T20, so full member. Time taken between the overs, so get through the overs, be ready. It's been a massive success so far. 60 seconds, plenty of time. Excellent from the ICC. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent bowling. Young man, but that is really high experience stuff because he followed Sterling, cramping him. Absolutely, he's firing it in. Paul Sterling, he's got the most boundaries, 401 and more. He's still out there and cracking. He's in the mood today. I tell you, I give credit to the youngster, though. I give credit to that young man, bowling left arm finger spin up against such a dynamic batter in Paul Sterling. He's giving Sterling no with his crap. Now the ball, the brave ball now for Dyes to bowl it with a bit of pace off, wide outside the off jump and try and get that top edge. That would be the brave option. Brilliant turn, I tell you. It's a master class, young man. For some reason, for some reason, the wickets are not hitting. First luck for Ruki in his first overs, a few deliveries missed, and now Nangyala Ikharote. Once again, he goes behind, and then, as you rightly said, he bowls it towards the offside. That's brilliant bowling. Pressure on Sterling. Yeah, full toss, misses out there, Sterling. The previous three balls were so good that Sterling just missed out on that full toss. Normally, Paul Sterling would hit that out of the stadium. 25 in a run ball, but he's got to start. Ireland are well placed. It's not a kind of ground you get 170, 180, it's a 145, 150 kind of surface. I tell you what, folks, in Afghanistan, you've got a top class young left arm spinner. 10 done, 66 for two.
just uh, probably on your call, whatever you think is the drive. If there's any wetness, then you're into the single numbers. Probably starting with four. So go four, three, two, one. You're not the one back here. Just Janat Janat Watan, heavenly Afghanistan, beautiful bit of music. Thank you to all the fans out there in Afghanistan who were sending me messages about that beautiful tune. Absolute classic, lovely bit of music. Ireland well placed here. Rashid's into the attack. Dangerous time, he just had a break. The ground staff have been out, rope in the outfield. And you get your premier bowler back in. You don't want Ireland batters to be overly cautious, but just got to be careful after a little break. Absolutely, and Rashid Khan enjoys bowling in Sharjah. He's got 34 wickets of 96 in total that he has in UAE. This is straight into the hands of the fielder. He's got him. Rashid Khan gets the man. Paul Sterling, his counterpart. Well, I meant you got to be careful just after a break. It's good captaincy. Your premier bowler straight after a break. Up against Paul Sterling, who just felt the pinch. You cannot help feel, but the previous overs pressure culminates in Sterling towing one straight to Long on. He knew he was in trouble. Ibrahim will not drop that. Rashi's back, baby. He's in the wicket column. Sterling's got to go for 25. 66 for three. Trouble with a capital T and Camfer's in. Rashid Khan into the attack, into the wickets. Gone! Rashid! Rashid Khan is back in charge of erupts. This moment people were waiting for. Listen to the crowd. 
Listen to the noise. Everyone is just enjoying it. Rashid Khan is back and back with a bang. It is 84th wicket to him. In the T20Is, he's the fourth on the list. And what a moment. He's on a hat-trick. Oh, I tell you what, Rashid, we've missed you for the last four months. We have missed you in blue. New batter, attack the stump. It's the googly at the back of the hand. Curtis Camfer, that's ambitious. He's seen it all before as Rashid Camfer goes. First ball duck. Ireland are in real strife. 66 for four. Have you ever felt pressure like it? Talented batter into the cauldron. Rashid Khan, folks, he's sitting on a hat trick. He has a T20I hat trick before against who? The Irish. Penny for your thoughts, young man. Penny for your thoughts. Two slips in play. Set himself up with the googly, but will Rashid bowl that big leg break? Googly beats the keeper, it's gonna go for boys, it's all happening. Four boys, he went for the googly, he had two slips in play. Neil Rock didn't know which way it was going, nor did the keeper. Yeah, no clue, the wicket keeper didn't have a clue. Rashid Khan has got two fifers against Ireland, but look at this. Two slips in place, goes for the googly. He didn't read it at all, and neither did the wicket keeper. Incredible bowling, this from Rashid Khan. This is unbelievable. This is the end of Paul Sterling. I don't mind the option. It's an aggressive shot, toe of the bat. I don't mind it. I do mind that. Low percentage, Rashid too good. Google. Where have you been? We missed you. Where have you been, buddy? Four months, it seems like it's been a year. Great to have you back. Yeah, the impact that he brings into the game. This was the delivery. No clue at all. The hat trick ball, the wicket keeper, and the batsman both didn't have a clue. Last ball of the over. Negotiated nicely. End of a wicket taking. Two wickets in the over, 71 for four, Ireland. Ireland from a position of authority are now in real trouble. 71 for four. Rashid Khan is all over them. Kurote, who's been superb. Left arm finger spin, but the control, the accuracy. It's going to be wide. That's good glove. Good keeping that. He's had a difficult night so far. Fahimi behind the stumps. Well, this is Ireland at the World Cup. India on the 5th of June in New York. And they followed up with Canada in New York. I tell you what, there's no easy games there for Ireland. India and Pakistan, obviously two powerhouses, but Canada and the USA are playing some really good cricket. Canada off a very good tour here to the UAE. Gone! It's, it's a procession. If it's not wrist spin, it's finger spin. Neil Rock into the side and out as quick as he came. Nangyalai Harote making a statement 
announcing his arrival on the international stage. What an asset turning out to be for Afghanistan. A great debut in the one day and a wonderful debut. Look at this. No clue, nothing at all. Turns just enough to beat the bat and disturb the furniture. Nangyalai Kharota is second for him alongside Rashid Khan. Nile Rock departs after making just one Ireland or 72 for five. Five down Ireland, Gareth Delaney who's had good success the top of the order but now playing a slightly different role, used as a power hitter at the back end. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's all happening, Ireland have lost. They've lost three for six, they've lost four for 18. This is the end of Lero. Have a look at the pace on the ball. And good grip, driving the ball into the surface. Neil Rock trying to hit through mid-off, should be thinking leg side and mid-on. Excellent bowling. Karote, that's beautiful. Two for six, he has some 2.2. A week ago, he hadn't played an international game. Now he's just taking poles for fun. Very exciting prospect for Afghanistan. Listen to the crowd enjoying every bit of that. A lot of people coming in to cheer for Afghanistan. It's the month of Ramadan in the evenings. They can come. Some Irish fans won't be looking so happy after the loss of multiple wickets in a row. Rashid Khan and Yale Kharote doing the damage from both ends. Yeah, good to see a crowd in because truth be told, the ODIs. We didn't get many in watching, so it's nice to see. Friday night, Sharjah. And don't forget, folks, it's the first of three. Sunday and Monday as well, so if you're in the area, even if you're not in the area, get down and watch. Well, stay tuned and watch from your TV, watch from the comfort of your home, but this is excellent from Afghanistan. 22 for four in the last 30 balls. Ireland are going nowhere. Fast. Now, sliding down, was there an inside edge? Muted appeal. Harry Tector has just been watching the damage from the non-strikers end. He's eight from nine, Harry Tector. Just think, what's happening? Let's have a look at this. It's the arm ball so that you can see the finger behind the ball just driving it through down leg side. Yeah. Beautiful. Again, just two off it. 12 done. 73 for five. Spin carrying the day for Afghanistan. Rashid Khan. Two for six and two overs. Those two in two balls. It's now Mohammed Nabi into the attack. Replacing Rashid Khan. Karatai, two for seven in his three. Confidently punched down the ground. Very good evening, Brian Murgatroyd. Hello, Tino. Hello to all our viewers, wherever you're watching. Mohammed Nabi, 
fresh off five for 17 in the third and final one day international so he'll be absolutely full of confidence so much depending now on Harry Tector for Ireland to get any sort of a score at all here yeah he's in good nick isn't he magnificent 138 in the first ODI in fact we've been saying that about his batting in good nick for about two years but yes a, a score that the Irish will feel they can bowl at will be heavily dependent on his contribution as well as Delaney all isn't lost here for Ireland because the average first innings total here at Sharjah is only 151. I say only, it's a long way away at the moment when you're 75 for five, but if they can get up to 140, it's a, a workable total. But that's easier said than done. 75 for five. Ireland made a decent enough start. They were 54 for one at one stage. But they've fallen in a heap now. Rashid Khan, two for six in two overs. Karote, two for seven. It's been so good since we've seen them. You're talking about 140. It's a great shot from Tector. It's into the crowd. Six for Harry Tector. Tremendous blow. Slightly short and very quickly onto this. Harry Tector. Just the swivel deposited that easily I was about to make the point that you talk about 140 they're gonna to have to go at nine and over from here to get that shots like that will help the rag coming out there to dry the ball do you definitely gonna be a factor this evening absolutely no breeze here at the moment I was out there earlier. Definitely felt a little bit muggy. That's that six. Very well played. And even if he hadn't got enough on it, he had got the gap. No fielder anywhere. Within the vicinity of that shot. And again, the rag at the back of Karote's trousers. Very nicely struck by Delaney. Half a metre in either direction, and that was four. He hit it straight at Rashid Khan. Rashid Khan's gone down for a bit, yeah? I don't blame him. That has been smashed. He hasn't enjoyed that, has he? Well, we were talking about the ball getting a little bit uh, slippery, and there's an example. Lost his grip of the ball there, Kurote. Let's take a look. There you go. 
slip before he's even started to come over to try and deliver the ball. Towels are out already. So that definitely will be a factor. Probably a determining one in the second innings. The Jew. End of the over, 14 gone, Ireland 84 for five. Look at the figures there from the spinners. Eight overs between them. Four for 31. That brings Gareth Delaney back on strike. And just have a look at him when uh, when he's in his stance now with his bat raised. This is a legacy of a knee injury he suffered as a teenager playing rugby. He missed a season of cricket as a result. It caused a remodelling of his batting technique with his father. And that's what's resulted in the, the high back lift that he has. Almost stands there like a, a baseball batter as he prepares to face uh, the bowlers. It certainly hasn't hampered his ability to hit the ball. That's for sure. Had to scamper towards the end, but... All was well. That gripping the bat right at the top of the handle. That gives him leverage to be able to uh, get a lot of power and a lot of distance into his hitting that's why he's so strong down the ground up and over gets good length on his shots aerial on a strongly built unit as well which helps Eight and over from here, which is achievable if these two can bet the majority of the reigning, remaining five and a half overs. We'll get them 131. And I think they'll be happy with that, Brian. Well, it gives them something to work with. Just thinking about a game that happened last night in Dubai. A little bit of slippery there. Game in Dubai last night. Scotland uh, made 90 odd and uh, they had the UAE at one stage 19 for 7 stifled appeal all obviously going to be drifting down past the leg stump yeah it's just turned a bit off the surface and he knew straight away and that's why he didn't carry on vociferously with the appeal. Dropped. Faisal Hak Faruqi had a lot of ground to cover from short, fine leg. But having got there, he'll be disappointed he couldn't hang on. End of the over. Ireland 91 for five.
Well, Ireland 91 for five. It could so easily have been six from the last ball of that previous over. Rashid Khan prompting a false shot, but Faisal Hak Faruqi couldn't hang on. Omazai coming back now from the Sharjah club end. Two expensive overs to start with, or one certainly at the beginning. Here's that drop catch. Yeah, this would have been more than handy for Afghanistan had he held on to this. Fortunately, when you're running like that, it always seems like the ball's going over your shoulders. And you could see he had to extend the arms right at the last minute because he wasn't quite under the ball. It will always be difficult, one, running because your eyes aren't level, you don't have a stable base, and two, when it looks like it's going over you. It always looks like it's going a little bit further than it is. It would have been uh, an outstanding catch that he held on. My impression was that uh, Rashid actually bowled that one from a little bit further back than he would normally bowl. Yep, absolutely, there you are. Long, long way back there. And that prompted, I'm sure, one of the reasons for the mistiming. Well spotted. Brian, very nice. Yeah, it's interesting, I've not seen Rashid do that an awful lot in the past. It's a, it's a trick that's used by several other bowlers. Mark Watt, the, the Scotland left-arm spinner, is someone who, who does it an awful lot. Well, not an awful lot, but he does it on a regular basis. Shows one of us up here is paying attention. Crucial stage this for Ireland. Four balls left in the 16th over, and then four overs left after that. Still seven runs short of 100. At this stage, I would have been hoping there would be somewhere at the 110, maybe 15 mark. Have you been happy with the approach of the Irish here over the course of the whole innings, Tino? It's, it's been very frenetic, I would say, hasn't it? It has. I, I thought the first part of the innings was quite good, especially after that outstanding first over from Fazal Haq Farooqi. I thought, until the dismissal of Balburni, they were going quite nicely. 38 when that first wicket fell, but since then... The introduction of turn from the spinners and those three quick wickets really is what set them back a little bit. Now Harry Tector, we know, whichever format it is, he'll take his time when he walks out to the middle. He's 21 from 19. He'll look to start to just push up his scoring right now with the four overs remaining after this one. But it makes it even more difficult for a player like him when his wickets falling constantly at the other end. It's well bowled. Slow ball bouncer from Omar Zai. Who of course, is getting ready to head off to the IPL after this, the Indian Premier League. One of three Afghanistan players who've signed up for the Gujarat Titans, along with his captain here, Rashid Khan, and Noor Ahmed. Real improvisation from Tech to there. And even though it was a very clever shot, just got him a single. Yeah, he just needed a little bit more elevation on the ball. So he hit it with a more 
vertical bat as opposed to horizontal. That would have nicely ramped and gone all the way. He'll take the two nonetheless. Take the one. Looking for that wide Yorker. And he's got the correct field set for it as well. Short third man, then he's got a third man on the right of him. And then he's got a backward point on the boundary. So he's expecting that if he does manage to chop it away, it'll go to either of those two fielders. Miscued from Delaney. Has he got away with it? Yes, he has. Oh, goodness me. Ibrahim Zadran has actually needed it for four. Brings up the 100. 16 gone. Ireland 100 for five. I think the problem with this uh, island performance is they've had no rhythm to this innings. Eighth over was where their problem started. They lost four for 18 after that. Lost two wickets in the 11th over. They got a bonus boundary that uh, last ball. They've only gone at uh, a runner ball for the last 30. Have lost the one wicket. There's been a high percentage of dot balls, which has uh, been a real concern for Ireland. And now they've got four overs left to try and get as many as they possibly can. Spinners have been outstanding. Only going at uh, a fraction over six and over, and you're up against this guy. He's still got two overs to go. He's got two for 12 at the moment. One over, sorry. Two for 12 at the moment. And only the single. Put, should have put pressure on and come back for the second. Another look at the boundary. Last ball. Yeah, a little bit of fortune to this, wasn't there, Mikey? Just all went horribly wrong, and a kick of the advertising hoardings <laughs> in... Just sheer frustration from Ibrahim Zidran. But great to have this man back, the smile on his face and the impact he's had picking up those consecutive wickets of Paul Sterling and Curtis Camper. And he can only have missed that hat-trick by a matter of inches. Yeah, it wasn't much in that, that's for sure. Yeah, he's a class act. I mentioned earlier, it was a, a lot of wrong -uns in T20 games. Franchise or internationals, and he's a proud international player for Afghanistan. He's done an outstanding job, and it's just brilliant to see him back. Yeah, his smile said it all at the toss, didn't it? Just so happy to see him healthy. He's not just great for Afghan cricket, he's great for the world game. And he's been back to his mercurial best here. Rangan picked up. Nicely fielded, too. That is good work. That's the youngster. He's a whippet. Karote. Terrific stuff. He's having a great day. What a start he's having to his international career. Hadn't even been capped yet. Took a marvellous catch out in that part of the woods. It's his weaker hand, remember, going across to his right. It looks like he belongs. This production line of talent that Afghanistan have just keeps churning them out. Ireland, though, for me, Mike, he's still in this game. They'll need a, a flying flourish to finish. Gareth Delaney certainly capable to clear the ropes, as is Mark Adair, who'll follow. Someone's got to play an extraordinary cameo. That's picked up, but not out of the middle. On the bounce. Oh, and that's a bit of good fortune for Ireland as well. Slipping and sliding. And would you believe it? It's Ibrahim Zidran again. And there's some of the travelling support. Gabby Lewis, most notably. Girlfriend of Harry Tector there, watching on the Irish Women's International. Oh, dear. Not one he's going to want to see again. Whoops, there he goes. Well, he's need one over the rope. And now he's rather comically crestfallen. A little bit of Jew involved in that. Yeah. Critical runs. That's yeah, going to be an issue later, the Jew. Hello. Nicely bowled. Hello. 
Yeah, Khan's impact on this match already. So evident to see he'd love one more wicket. The final ball of his four over allocation. Yeah, two for 19 he's got. Couldn't that do off this last ball? It's hit pretty well. Might be out. Is out. Karode has picked up a catch as well. Bowled 14 dot balls. Two for 16 when he was bowling Karote. Rashid's picked up another wicket. Three for 19 for him. Ireland have lost another one. Great stuff from Rashid Khan. Well, we just said he'd love one more wicket. And he writes his scripts. That's the question I have to ask you, Mike Aisman. It's all about that man, the magician, Rashid Khan. Karote deserves credit too. An excellent catch held by him. Delaney's gone for 16. Ireland 107 for six. They're going to have to go at, I think, 9, 10 and over. Mark Adair now. He can hit a long ball. We need to make uh, some connection. Yeah, that career best 72 was a phenomenal lock off. Just 36 balls against Scotland at the T20 World Cup qualifier in Europe in Edinburgh last year. This is the wicket. This is the reason he's here. Good effort from Delaney. I don't think he'd really change a huge amount about the stroke, even though the man was out. But this is an excellent catch right in front of the eyes, the watchful eyes of the bowling coach, Hamid Hassan. Karote, sensational. Karote kid. Avino Huck. Loves bowling this situation, but that's a fine shot to start. That's gone for four. Has set up this over nicely. Can they get 10 off this over? This, for me, the balance with Delaney in the side is a much better one for Ireland. Adair is a spot too high, in my opinion, in ODI cricket. He's going to be so dangerous coming in at number eight. I know he's at the non-striker's end at the moment, but if him and Tector can get a flying finish here, even get to 140, let alone 145, 150, Ireland are in this contest. Chasing is not easy at charge it. Remember, it's a used wicket too. But they will have the benefit of the ball being in damp. Spinners will struggle, inexperienced spinners, spinners that is, and also the ball will skid on off the surface. It won't be gripping, but tech to his key right now. Batting deep. It's another beautiful shot, straight decks to cover, no run. Batting deep in the crease, Tector, trying to get underneath the deliveries and going straight. That's what he's looking to do. What a reaction from Harry Tector. <laughs> Definitely getting deep into the crease. There's almost a trigger movement back, isn't there? Good spot, Mike Hazeman, but look at the reaction from Harry Tector. That's what I love. Couldn't believe it. He thought it was right in the slot there to be hit. There is protection. It's a very, very straight extra cover right on the edge of the 30-yard circle. But off up on the circle, too. It's got underneath that one, and he's crashed that for four. That's a fine shot. That is a screamed across the turf. I'm well, not certain of the plan here from Naveen al Haq because it's almost like he's intending to bowl it exactly where he is. And Tector is saying, well, the man out in the deep is at deep point. All I need to do is beat that straight extra cover. And I'm going to get four. Look at the amount of gap he has to hit through here. Must be 40, 50 yards. And now the field will change. Those four fielders on the leg side right now, almost bystanders. Hasn't changed much, just a little bit straighter on the offside. Not much, though. Slow delivery that time, couldn't pick it up. It's only going to be one only. Yeah, I think the problem was the uh, the line, that previous ball that went for uh, for four. Hope you're enjoying this telecast. It's a Firebird production for Afghanistan Cricket Board. We are loving bringing it to you, so I hope you're sitting back and really having fun watching this. What a way to finish the tour. I think it's been a historic one for a number of reasons. You look at the impact that Ireland have had in the test match, then Afghanistan flying back in the ODIs. Remember, you can watch it on YouTube almost all around the world. Yeah, live feed on uh, YouTube and at Fireberg Universe. 
Two balls left in the over. Nine off it so far. Straight, that's what he wanted to do. Didn't get any elevation, that was the problem there. Just uh, stopped by the 12th man. One run. Just something we've picked up. We see there a couple of the Afghan fielders have masks on. It shows how much is going around both camps. George Dockrell is not here because of illness. Please don't give me flashbacks to the COVID days, Mikey. They're long gone, aren't they? Yeah, they're gone. Surely. Just making sure they stay healthy. I think that's the, the name of the game. That's a good shot. That's what he was looking to do. Straight down the ground. And this is a terrific over. 14 off it. 18 overs gone. 121 for six. What a top over that last one was. 14 from it. That's their best. That's the tallest building. And we haven't seen a satellite dish sitting on those tall buildings from over number 14, just the one at over number 17. So that's why this is important. Tech to 37 off 28, and he's just smashed that last one for four. Straight. That was the length he was looking for. He just continues to be Ireland's man for all seasons, doesn't he? I think by his own admission, it's, it's probably the format he is maybe grasped the most keenly at the slowest pace T20, but he's still very effective at it, Faruqi now. Two overs left. It's got underneath that too, and that's gone. That's gone for six. That is a terrific hit. That has gone a long way. What a start to the over that is. And look at the balance for Ireland with Mark Adair. This man, his power, his dynamism at number eight. And all of a sudden, the Irish fans just starting to believe a touch. 150 could be a very competitive score here. Mark Adair hits as clean a ball as anyone in this entire Irish camp. And I'll tell you something, he has not got that out of the screws. If he did, it would have been out on the main road. Average score batting first here is 151. Only two totals have been chased down, 145 plus. That's squeezed away, just the one. Well, Nabby's done well there, isn't he? I think he's actually a bit unlucky here, Mark Adair. A yard either side of Nabby, that would have been four more, most likely. You really get a sense that with Barry McCarthy to follow at nine, remember he made, he made an international 50 against India back in August in Malahide. All of a sudden, Ireland bat deep. They need to bat deep. Much prefer this lineup today. Good fight back here from the Irish. Big swing and a miss. The length was right to go with that shot. You feel he really missed out on that opportunity, Tector. Well, either strike one or four, whichever one of the sports you want to refer to. Both these two are actually very keen golfers. Tector and his family up at the Port Marnock Golf Club, a famous establishment in North County, Dublin. Mark Adair, very keen golfer, hits a huge ball with the driver. And they are really teeing off here. They only have nine balls left to work with Ireland. Had a quick look to the leg side. He's got a slower delivery, a short one, that he puts away just for one. That's nicely bowled by Faruqi. This over's uh, tidy at the moment, but there's still two balls to go. He's come back nicely after that six first ball. Just wonder for me as well, is it a little bit of a misstep from Rashid Khan in terms of Fazal Haq Farouki only going to be able to bowl three of his four over allocation? You'd think with the quality that he has possessed and shown us throughout at the death in the ODI series that they would certainly want him to have bowled all of them. Instead, he's bowling a penultimate, maybe Naveen to bowl the final. He's got away with that. That's a miss from Adair. I guess you're not expecting uh, that sort of length. I don't think Faruqi was by any means was trying to bowl that sort of length. Trying to go for that Yorker, but uh, it's a missed opportunity. 
Uh, again, even just an outside edge in that, it probably would have raced away for four. Adair can't believe it. Every ball and event here. Ireland need to find, well, you'd think 16 from these last seven balls in a dream world. They'd love 21. Get up to 145, 150. That could be very competitive, I think. Third man and fine leg, both inside the circle. This is going to be a slow delivery. It's going to be dead straight. It was uh, nice and full, but a little bit wide. Only one. So nine off the over. That's a good comeback. 130 for six. Adair's just arrived. He's on strike at the moment. This is something that Afghanistan won't mind, I don't think, at this stage. Tekta's uh, the one that's likely to hit the big ball more consistently. If Adair makes good connection, there's trouble. Naveen Uhak, short delivery, set him on the helmet. That's going to uh, need a bit of a check. Yeah, we'll rightly have the mandatory concussion check, but I think he should be okay. The reason why it was the slower ball. There's Mark Rouse, the head of physiotherapy and medical services for Cricket Ireland. He'll come on and conduct his checks, but you'll see here. Look at the release point. It's a leg cutter. It's bowled into the surface, so most of the pace and hopefully the danger has been taken out of it. You never like to see any batter hits. Given Adair's power and proficiency at hitting full deliveries, it's definitely a good option to bowl to Mark Adair. Looks like everything's okay. There's a few smiles out there. There's a couple of standard questions that they get asked. But, uh, he's doing a lot of the talking at the moment, so I think he's going to be fine. Right, six down. Let's have a wicket. Skabaz took a blinder of a catch first up. Well, Bernie was on his way with that one. That was an early fall. That was a toe end. And that was for uh, Karote. His first wicket in uh, T20 international cricket. Rashid Khan was into the game and he was caught at long on. He played a big role, Rashid Khan. He picked up Sterling. That was a huge wicket. And then he got this wrong and first ball. He often bowls those to new batsmen, disturb the furniture. And that one just sneaking through as well from Karote. That was his uh, second. Rashid wasn't finished. Clubbed that one. Karote wasn't finished either. Took a fine catch and that was the third for Rashid Khan. Three for 19 for him, two for 16 for Karote Kid, and 130 for six it is at the moment. It's the Karote and Khan show, isn't it? Just a few days ago, the final ODI, it was the Karote and Nabi show. This time, the president himself has just moved aside for the returning captain, Rashid Khan. Look at those figures, two outstanding spells. Good news is, market airs, good to continue. Five balls left. Naveen. Gives him some width. He hammers that quite nicely, but it should be only one. It is only one. Good work. Tech to on strike. I think that's the right call as well. Now, this total, I think, is just a little bit below par right now. But there are four balls to go. They're so, so important, these four balls. I'm pretty sure it's Karote again out there. It really is the two Ks on show. The brilliance and class of Rashid Khan and the youngster. The enthusiasm of Karote. He's worried about him going leg side. He's worried about him going straight down the ground. So he'll block off that offside. Oh, he's picked up that beautifully. The length was wrong. That is a magnificent shot for six. This is the power that Harry Tector has added over the last 24 months or so. He didn't have it when he first came to the international game. And as a consequence, it was his strike rate that was one of the hot topics in this format. But now he's added the power. He can accelerate. He's striking it over 140 on a surface that might not be the easiest. That's a stroke of the highest quality, the highest class. Naveen Huck is getting some tap. None for 40. Halfway through his last over. That is a fine shot. Can they get past that 145 mark that I mentioned where only two teams have chased down that total? Out of 20. 
scores a 145 plus. He's driven that strong. That might be four. It is four. That's right out of the screws again from Tech. He's a wonderful player. And this is a marvellous innings. Make that 141 strike rate now, 150. Who says there isn't room for conventional cricket strokes in the shortest format? This is as good a cover drive as you'd want to see. Again, deep in the crease. Again, I'm just a bit bemused by that fielding position. The man who's out is more of a deep point than a deep cover. Tector's exploited it nicely. He moves to within two of a T20 I-50. Yeah, they definitely got that fielding spot wrong. Definitely at times got his line wrong. Naveen's been all over the shop today, I'm afraid, as far as Afghanistan is concerned. Around the wicket now. Even more of a chance to drive on that uh, offside. He's going to have to wall full. And he does. And he's hit it well, and it's four more. That is superbly played, and it brings up 50 of 33 deliveries as well. This is one fine knock. Well, it's a fifth T20i 50. And this man here, Harry Tom Tector. Well, there's every chance that he's going to tear up every record book that Ireland have. A very proud girlfriend there, Gabby Lewis. She's no stranger to making 50s for Ireland herself, for the Irish women's team. This is a fine, fine stroke. Again, it's that strange field we've identified that we don't think is right. He's exploited it again. And Ireland are one big blow from that 150 plus total. Well, they got that 145 that I've been talking about. 145 plus is key, this venue. And that's away as well. That's gone for four. What a superb performance this is from Harry Tector. 56. 34 balls, a strike rate of 165, seven fours, two sixes, and Ireland end up with 149 for six. That is outstanding work. And all of a sudden, it's game on here. It really didn't feel like it at 72 for five, but thanks to Harry Tector, nice little contribution from Gareth Delaney and Mark Adair with that deeper Irish batting lineup. And all of a sudden, Rashid Khan, on his return to the international game, might just have a few questions to ponder during the break and the predominantly Afghan crowd has all of a sudden been silenced very much game on I'll give you a bit of a rundown here the first six overs 48 for one the next nine overs 43 for four the last five 58 for one and let me just be clear only two first innings totals of 145 plus at Sharjah have been chased down they've got 149 Afghanistan have got a bit of a, uh, a circle going a bit of a, a chat in the middle they need to play well. They need to make sure they get a very good start. That's going to be absolutely important. And that's the big question. So this is uh, going to be some game. It's the first of three, remember. Afghanistan won the toss, elected the bowl. They mentioned the Jew to Rashid Khan at the uh, to toss. Thought that was going to be a fact. I think it might be, but this total's very tidy. Tech to brilliant with his 56. 149 for six it is. Look at the partnerships. It wasn't bad, actually, from Sterling and Valberni. Sterling wasn't hitting the ball.